you go. So, six McNuggets, quarter pounder with cheese, large fries, and a strawberry milkshake. No apple pie. For breakfast? Yeah, I suppose you're right. God, I hate these Sunday morning stints. Brenda's getting fed up with them and all. Is she? Yeah, I've hardly seen her this past fortnight. My little David's wondering where his daddy's got to. How old is he now? Uh, nearly eight. Is he really? <laughs> Your wife still hasn't found out about Brenda and David, then? No. <laughs> Here, where's my barbecue sauce? Is it in your bag? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Tom. Hang on. He's here. Hey? Camera, quickly. It's on the dash. Mind your head! Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, put my thumb in the barbecue sauce. So have you decided what we're going to do on my birthday? Well, I was thinking of taking you to see Phantom of the Opera. Oh, Peter. Then I saw the price of the tickets and changed my mind. I see. So what are we going to do? Well, I thought a little restaurant somewhere, you know. Romantic lighting, good meal, decent bottle of wine. You can come as well if you like. You should have learnt by now. It's useless to expect you to be sensible. But the restaurant sounds fine. Is that instead of an expensive present or as well as? Certainly. What's happened? I've lost it. Hang on. I'll check the mic. Testing! Testing! Ah! <laughs> oh, look at the headphones on. Sorry. Sorry. Maybe it's the receiver. I'll check it. Seems all right. Hang on, I've got something. Oh, I scream. Do you want one? Right. Who's next? Well, this is a chap we want for the SRL post. Name's Chapman, Peter Chapman, 32 years of age, college lecturer. Uh, Oxbridge? Uh, no, local poly. This the barbecue sauce, apparently. <laughs> and this the lens cap. <laughs> Again, I don't know what's happening in your department these days, Morris. Here we are in an age when we can photograph a mouse in a Ukrainian cornfield from eight miles up, and we're sending out people who couldn't take a decent photograph of a subject if they got them sitting in a bloody photo booth. Oh, I think you're being a bit unfair, Andrew. Lewis tries very hard. He took my niece's wedding photographs, you know. Oh, I know. I saw them. Most unusual. I've never seen a wedding party snapped through a car windscreen with a telephoto lens before. <laughs> and the only thing that was sharp was the tax disc. Yes, all right, Andrew. All right, Andrew. You get the message. Yes, well, I'm sorry to go on. About it, Morris, but the Ruskers are laughing at us. Now, look, what about this chap Chapman? Well, we have got some video footage on him. <coughs> Consistently excellent results from his students. Spent five years at GKT Electronics studying microwave communications development. <laughs> uh, married? Yes, name Sarah. Works for a publishing company. Ah. Now, who's this? It looks like James Coburn. <laughs> Will you tell your chaps to stop taking the firm's tapes home for their personal use? Yes, Andrew, I'll have a word with them. Well, getting back to this chap Chapman, we still haven't covered the important question. Uh, mental stability. No, no, no. Uh, financial stability. No, no, no. Um, um, sexual proclivities. No, for goodness sake! Can he bowl? <laughs> well, it doesn't say. Oh, wonderful. How on earth are we supposed to carry out a proper recruitment programme when proper information is omitted? Well, it's never stopped just in the past. And look who we got. Burgess, McLean, Blunt, Blake. Not a decent spin bowler amongst them. <laughs> so what do you want me to do then? Well, we'd better get this chap in, organise a 261 immediately, and get the site officer working on it. Right you are. The only trouble is that Chapman seems rather settled in his work. Oh, dear. Well, find some little encouragement, something to sway him, some little inducement that'll prise him away from the poly and make him want to join us. Sacked? What do you mean, sacked? <laughs> well, uh... Sacked. Fired, dismissed, elbowed, dropped. 
The big E? Yeah, I wasn't looking for a definition from Roger. I mean, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> it's the cutbacks, Peter. I've been told to lose three people from the staff roster, and I'm afraid it's you, Dawlish, and Hislop. Hislop? Well, the poor sod's still recovering from a coronary. <laughs> I know. I had to be very careful how I broke the news to him. Well, how did he take it? Well, his heart monitor went beepity beep for a while, but I think... <laughs> it's just not fair. You're right. There he is in a hospital bed. No, I don't mean him. I mean me. <laughs> What's the idea of giving me the push after all I've done here? Look, Peter, I happen to think you're wasted at the poly. Now, believe me, matey, I'm doing you a favour. Oh, well, now you explain it. What can I say? I am deeply touched. Thank you so much. Look, I think I can help you. Uh, just listen to me, please. Now, some friends of mine run a recruitment agency, and I happen to know they're looking for someone with precisely your qualifications. Well, I think, given my current situation, I could be tempted. Of course, I'd have to insist on 40 grand a year, a BMW, and free access to the girls in the typing pool. I wouldn't <laughs> stop, Peter. It's well worth your while seeing them. Fant and Hicks. Yes, well, I might decide to pop along and see them, I suppose. Good. They're expecting you at 11. Don't be late. <laughs> Can I offer you a drink? Mr. Chapman? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Not teetotal? No, 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 like a drink. You're not a drunk, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. Are you now, or have you ever been a practicing homosexual? <laughs> no, but I'm willing to learn if the job depends on it. <laughs> Please don't be flippant, Mr. Chapman. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit nervous, I think. Yes. Well, let's have a look at your file, shall oh, we? Allow me. Drop my bank statements. Oh. <laughs> my bank statements. Thank you. Finances are a bit shaky. You're often short of money. I'm a teacher. Yes, of course, silly question. <laughs> Sorry, what are you doing with my bank statements? Open to bribery. Well, I don't know. It depends how much you have in mind. <laughs> You're not being very helpful, Mr. Chapman. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just a bit confused. Um, what's all this about? Well, we're just trying to assess your suitability for this post. But what post? You haven't told me anything about it yet. Ah, the post. Well, we're looking Andrew. for a seat. <laughs> Truman? Yes, sir? When do the window cleaners usually come? The first Monday of every month, sir, 10 a.m. Have a word with security, will you? The bloody French are at it again. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr Chapman, we're presently looking to recruit an assistant research and science officer for the services research laboratory. Services? Which services? Well, it's rather like an extension of the civil service, actually. Oh. Then goes the BMW and the 40 grand a year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Oh, no. No, nothing. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry, the window cleaners. They've just dropped out of sight. Good, good. <laughs> now, Mr Chapman, we think that you're highly suitable for the job. We think you'll find it very stimulating. You see, we're developing all these new gizmos, transmitting and receiving devices, new weaponry and so on. But our case officers, watchers, agents in the field have the devil's own job understanding how the damn stuff works. And that's where you would come in, Mr. Chapman. I say, sounds very cloak and dagger. It's a bit like MI5. Well, exactly. <laughs> oh, good heavens, you mean we haven't told you? <laughs> well, yes, indeed, Mr. Chapman. We are talking about MI5. You want me to be a spy? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, no, it's your teaching ability we're after. Yes, your role would be to liaise with our boffins at SRL and GCHQ and spread the word amongst our field operatives. You would be working with Professor Shawcross, very eminent man, wonderful mind. You'd get a, a pretty decent salary. Uh, well, more than you're getting at the moment. Uh, wouldn't be difficult. Plus Boopah, luncheon vouchers, and a reasonable retirement pension. 
and the opportunity to write my memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> Has he signed the Official Secrets Act? Not yet. Just sign there, would you, Mr. Chapman, at the bottom. <laughs> Anyway, we'll give you 24 hours to think about it. In the meantime, you will say nothing about any of this to anyone. Now, do you understand? Oh, yes. I'm the soul of discretion. You ask anyone. <laughs> when would I get a code name? Code name? Well, yes, you know. Code name. <laughs> I think you've been seeing too many Harry Palmer films, <laughs> Mr. Chapman. We don't go in for that sort of thing anymore. Oh, pity. Oh, I think I would have really liked a code name. Well, what do you think, Morris? Well, it wouldn't hurt. Yes, why? Not <laughs> anything to oblige. Uh, let's see. Panda, Panther. Oh, no, no, they've gone. Oh, the next one is Puma. Puma? Great. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, no, I've missed one. No, it's, um, Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> Piglet. Well, you're the one that wanted a code name. Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for now, Mr. Chapman. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do forgive me. Piglet. <laughs> Any questions your end? I don't think so. Uh, well, that's just one. Mm. Um, there's no danger involved in any of this, is there? Danger? Well, I'm, I'm not likely to be shot by an enemy agent or anything. Oh, good Lord, no, 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 no. No, 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 you're far more likely to get shot by one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was one question I wanted to ask you, Mr. Chapman. Do you bowl? Sorry, bowl? Yes, cricket. Well, is it important? Well, yes, of course. It would help us no end. Well, in that case, I'm a short middle leg with a bit left-hand side and right arm under. Over, surely. Over. Over! Oh. Roger and Art. Sorry, Blofeld, but this time you've gone too far. Your fiendish plot to irradiate Kettering sewage works has been thwarted by me, Chapman. Peter Chapman. <laughs> and now, it's time for you to die. What are you doing? Sarah, I didn't know you were in. Well, how did you get on? With what? The interview. How did it go? The interview? How do you know about the interview? Who told you about the interview? Well, you did. You called me, remember? Oh, right. Well, the interview, how did it go? Oh, it's... It's, it's impossible to say. Why? Because they told me so. Who told you so? They did. Look, um, I can't tell you anymore. What is the matter with you? Uh, I can't tell you. Of course you can tell me. I can't. I'm... Sworn to secrecy. We don't have secrets from each other. Well, th this is different. How different? I can't tell you. Oh, no, no, God, this is ridiculous. Come on, Peter, you must be able to say something about it. All right. But what I tell you mustn't go beyond these four walls. Do you promise? All right, I promise. The interview today wasn't with an employment agency at all. When I got there, there were these two men, and they've offered me a job. Hello? Yes? No, I won't tell her anymore. Never heard of him. Try down the corridor. 
So, I'm Peter Chapman, your new research assistant. No. No, sorry. Doesn't ring any bells with me. Still, I'm always the last to know. Come in, take a seat. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, how much have they told you? Uh, almost nothing. I'm not surprised. That's about all they know. <laughs> well, Chapman, you have now become a small cog in the vast machine which is laughingly called British intelligence. Not by me, I hasten to add. <laughs> now, our job in this circus is to instruct an assorted bunch of knuckleheads in the operation of state-of-the-art technology. And believe me, Chapman, it's a lost cause. Why? Because the equipment's very complex? Partially, but mainly because our agents are extremely dim. <laughs> really? Oh, my dear boy, if they were lemmings, they couldn't even find a cliff to jump off. <laughs> Have a look at this. Now, this is all that remains of the prototype MX-27 bugging system. The microphone, which you now hold, should, of course, be secreted under the plaster of a wall. Now, the receiving unit, which is about so big, can then be used to monitor the microphone's output from a van parked up to five miles away. I see. So, where's the receiving unit? Buried in a wall in Belgrade. <laughs> I don't know why they did it. Frankly, I don't know how they did it. Well, they're obviously not that technical. My dear boy, we consider ourselves lucky to have got the van back. <laughs> now then, Chapman, can you use one of these? Oh, yes, rather. How much do you want for it? <laughs> like it. A sense of humour. Well, yes, you're going to need that when they come round with your pay packet. <laughs> well, I think the best thing we can do is to pop downstairs and sit in on a briefing session, you know? Give you an idea of what we're up against. Oh, right. Follow me. For goodness sake, Dexter, how on earth did you lose him? You couldn't have been more than 20 yards away from him. Well, I had him in view the whole time, sir. I was watching his reflection in the shop window. And? And I was outside next, and they had this very nice blue striped shirt in the window. <laughs> and? And I went in and bought it, sir. Oh, brilliant, Dexter, brilliant. Only five months' work down the drain. Ah, oh, the brain squad have arrived. I think you all know Professor Shawcross, and this is his new assistant, Peter Chapman. What brings you to our little coven? Just showing Chapman the ropes. Mind if we sit in? Help yourself, please. Now then, back to our tale, or should I say lack of tale, Truman. Couldn't you have picked him up? Oh, I did, sir. But I think he must have tumbled me. I don't know how. You don't think your choice of disguise might have had something to do with it? Sir? Well, I mean, wouldn't you think it strange being followed by a one-armed blind match seller? <laughs> <laughs> something amusing, you! Piglet! <laughs> Piglet, I should point out, gentlemen, is Mr. Chapman's code name. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. Ah, one of yours, Louis. How did you know, sir? Oh, just a shot in the dark, which, <laughs> which just about sums up your ability with a camera. Next. Ah, yes, now here's a very familiar face, our old friend Yuri Lebenkov. If he so much as sets foot within three miles of the Soviet embassy, I want to know, right? Lights, please. Right, gentlemen, well, as you are well aware, the Russians have been monitoring our field communications. So until the professor and his boffins come up with a way of beating this, we are implementing a period of radio silence. How do we stay in contact, sir? By using one of these. Is it a transmitter, sir? <laughs> no, Dexter, it's a 10p piece. You <laughs> shut it in a Box. Do you think we can manage that? Orange light. No. Nope. Orthopedic footwear shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see anything else beginning with O. Give me a clue. It's a car. A car. Opal. Nah. You give up? Yeah, go on, I give up. Audi. 
You do not spell Audi with an O, Dex. Don't you? Oh, Pratt. What's happening inside there? Not a lot. Shawcross is still nattering with a contact. Hang on. They're getting up. Right. As soon as they come out, we'll take him. I'll cross the other side of the road. You stay this side. We'll grab out of the car. Got it? Right. Oh, sod, it's Chapman. Chapman? Where? Over the road. Oh, what's he doing here? He'll blow the whole thing. Watch out. He's looking this way. Get down. Oh, bugger. Does Terma Salata stain? <laughs> I still say you shouldn't have tipped the guy. He was rude. No, he wasn't rude. A bit terse, perhaps, but you never know. He may have had a lot on his plate. More than we did. The service was really bad, the food was awful, and then you go and tip him. Well, I just... Shawcross. You bet I am. <laughs> yeah, that's Shawcross, my new boss. My car is down the road. We must hurry. Good evening, Professor. Lubenkov. I didn't expect to see you here. I thought it was the least I could do for so distinguished a guest. Anyway, we must be going. Please, get in. No, Professor. In the boot, if you please. The boot? I'm not traveling in the boot. But I'm afraid I must insist. <laughs> Hello, Professor. What are you doing here? Ah, Ch Chapman. Just been for a meal. You? Yes. Yes, we've just been for a curry. Are you having a bit of trouble? Oh, yes, the boot appears to be jammed. Oh, well, let me have a go. <laughs> oh, Professor Shawcross, my wife, Sarah. Pleased to meet you, Professor Shawcross. How do you do? You going somewhere, Professor? I think you'd better come along with oh, me, sir! <laughs> What can I say? I don't think I can remember a more dramatic first day for an employee. <laughs> I was only trying to help. And help you did, Piglet. You helped put one of our field agents into casualty. And more significantly, you helped Professor Shawcross to defect. Defect? Yes, we had been watching Shawcross for months. We wondered when he would make his first move. Well, now you know. Yes, I know we know now. <laughs> You've blown the whole operation, Piglet. I do hope this isn't going to happen again. Again? You mean you're going to give me another chance? Well, it's rather important that we fill the position quickly, and unfortunately, you are the only person on staff who's even vaguely qualified. <laughs> It's ironic, really, but you've inherited Shawcross's job. Yes, but on a probationary basis, of course. Congratulations, Piglet, on your promotion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Does this mean I'll get a rise? Don't push it, Piglet! <laughs> <laughs> 